Hey, what's happening? It's Simon in Tokyo listening to Snoop Doggy Dog. Let's look at some MCQs. This time we're going to be looking at autoimmune hepatitis. First one. A 33-year-old female comes to the office because of increasing fatigue and joint pain for the past three months. She has also noticed a decreased appetite and four a four kilogram weight loss. She does not complain of abdominal pain, neurologic symptoms, and she has not noticed any new rashes. She has always had irregular periods, but her last regular period was eight weeks ago. Her medical history is non-contributory and she takes no medications. She has been sexually active with her boyfriend for the past four months. Her temperature is 37.8. Pulse 77, blood pressure 132 over 88. Examination shows scleral icterus, spider telangiectasis on the trunk, and mild hepatosplenomegaly. Urine pregnancy test is negative. Laboratory studies show total bilirubin 2.9, direct bilirubin 0.3, AST 255, ALT 289. So ALT is higher than AST. HBS. AG is negative, and the anti-HBSAG is negative, anti-HCV uh, is negative, and anti-nuclear antibody is positive. And lastly, IgG is 4.6. Which of the following is the most appropriate test to confirm the diagnosis? A. Liver biopsy. B. Ultrasound of the abdomen. C. Anti-smooth muscle antibodies. D. Anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. E. Bone marrow biopsy. F. Blood culture. And the answer is liver biopsy. The main takeaway here is that autoimmune hepatitis should be considered in patients presenting with elevated liver enzymes and negative viral hepatitis antibodies. The gold standard for diagnosing autoimmune hepatitis is liver biopsy. Many autoantibodies have been identified, but none is specific for autoimmune hepatitis. Think about that for a second. So the problem here is the patient is presenting with fatigue and joint pain. Three months. Elevated liver enzymes but negative viral hepatitis antibodies. So you look at the liver and you can see whether or not there's a problem. The main explanation here, the patient's presentation is consistent with hepatitis, but the differential for hepatitis includes viral, alcoholic, neoplastic, and autoimmune. The findings of arthralgia, negative viral hepatitis serology, and elevated Ig, IgG point to autoimmune hepatitis as the likely cause. Patients without hypergammaglobulemia are unlikely to have autoimmune hepatitis. A liver biopsy showing a portal mononuclear cell infiltrate that invades the limiting plate surrounding the portal triad is considered the gold standard for diagnosis. The cause of autoimmune hepatitis is unknown. A long list of autoantibodies have been indicated, including antinuclear, anti-mitochondrial, anti-smooth muscle, p anca and anti-liver kidney, microsomal. None of these are specific for the diagnosis, though. The treatment for autoimmune hepatitis varies, but commonly includes systematic corticosteroids for up to 12 years. Well, for up to two years. After liver enzymes normalize... And remission occurs in less than 50% of cases after treatment is stopped. Okay, let's look at another one. Hold on a second. I'm going to play some Snoop first. Can we get a motherfucking moment of silence for this small chronic break? <laughs> yeah. Niggas be brown nosing these hoes and shit. Taking bitches out to eat and spending money on these hoes. You know what I'm saying? I treat a bitch like 7 Up. I never have, I never will. 
Apologies for the language. You without me is like hell. I did not expect that. Snoop Doggy Dog, we're gonna skip this song. I like your music, Snoop, but you can cut down on that language. Anyway, here we are with Osmosis looking at some questions. We're going to look at another one in a second. You know, the reason I go through these is because it's so helpful before a test. Go through these questions. Okay, a 33, a 30 year old woman comes to the clinic because of fever and fatigue. She has no chest pain, cough, sore throat, or hemoptysis. She works as a nurse practitioner in a nearby hospital. Five months ago, she was injured by a needle from an hepatitis patient. She also has Hashimoto's thyroiditis and receives replacement therapy. Her temperature is 38.5, pulse 100, respiration is 15, and blood pressure is 110 over 70. Physical examination shows jaundice and right upper abdominal quadrant tenderness. Laboratory studies show ALT 160, AST 150. So ALT is higher than AST here. Gamma glutamyl transferase, or GGT, is 35. Alanine phosphatase, or ALP, is 60. Bilirubin 3, hepatitis B surface antigen negative, hepatitis B surface antibody um, is uh, positive. Let me say that again. Hepatitis B surface antigen is negative, and hepatitis B surface antibody is positive. Hepatitis B core antibody is negative, and hepatitis C antibody is negative. ANA is positive, anti smooth muscle antibody is positive and anti-mitochondrial an- antibody is negative. A lot of labs there to consider. What is the most likely diagnosis here? Is it A, primary biliary cholangitis? B, chronic hepatitis B infection? C, acute hepatitis B infection? Or D, acute hepatitis C infection? Or could be autoimmune hepatitis? We know what this is because of the title of this podcast. But if you really know your stuff, it's going to shoot out at you that this is autoimmune hepatitis. The takeaway here is uh, autoimmune hepatitis is an immune-mediated injury of liver cells. It is caused by aberrant HLA class 2. It may present as acute hepatitis, chronic hepatitis, or cirrhosis. Anti-smooth muscle antibody, SMA, is very specific for autoimmune hepatitis. So I'm going to look back at the labs here. Anti-smooth muscle antibody. Can we find that here? Here it is. Anti-smooth muscle antibody. SMA is positive. So this is specific for autoimmune hepatitis. So let's read this main explanation. Autoimmune hepatitis is an an immune-mediated hepatic injury. It is due to aberrant human leukocyte antigen class 2 on liver cells. The aberrant HLA-2 induces the immune system to attack the liver, causing autoimmune hepatitis. The cause of aberrant HLA is still unknown. Autoimmune hepatitis usually occurs in women between the ages of 15 and 40. It may present as acute hepatitis, chronic hepatitis, or cirrhosis. Around one-third of the patients present with symptoms of acute hepatitis, which is characterized by fever, fatigue, jaundice, and upper abdominal quadrant pain. Patients with autoimmune hepatitis usually have other autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto thyroiditis. As with this patient, laboratory studies in autoimmune hepatitis show elevated liver enzymes, ALT and AST, and positive anti-smooth muscle antibody, anti-nuclear antibody, and liver kidney microsomal antibodies. In this case, um, let's look at that. Did it say that? Check that. Liver or kidney microsomal antibodies. I don't see that here. I'm missing that. Okay. 
Anyway, this is these are the most specific tests for autoimmune hepatitis. So the takeaway here, HLA class 2, anti-smooth muscle antibody, SMA, is very specific for autoimmune hepatitis. Thanks for tuning in. For this question, I'm going to be right back with some more questions. Why? Because I'm in the TI system, and I have a quiz tonight, so I go through these MCQs right before. And uh, I got a 90 on the last quiz. And I think uh, one of the main reasons is because my brain was sharp after going through these uh, questions. I really recommend you do that. Go to Osmosis. Again, they don't pay me to do this. I do it because it's fun.